So what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss the topic of absolute value, but a little bit more in depth than just saying, well, the absolute value is the distance from zero to the number one. And that's what we discussed today in chapter one, which was our basic introduction for absolute value. But today we're going to start looking at equations that involve absolute value. And they're pretty tough. The beginning ones will, get, the beginning ones will be easy, but we're going to get to some more complicated ones here. Um, and believe it or not, some of the stuff I was looking at the other night when I was making up my notes for this class, I had actually never seen a problem written that way, and I was very interested to see it. And I had to think and actually go through it myself and see what it was. Um, so the stuff that we're going to do today, I think, is very, uh, very interesting. So first, we already discussed this in class, uh, during chapter one. Think of it as the distance between the graph of x and the origin, or the distance between that number and the origin. So for example, the absolute value of negative 5 is just going to be 5. The absolute value of 5 is just 5. Now, the way we can do this is make a table. Okay? And I recommend that you do this by the way to help you organize your uh, notes here. After this table, we're going to go right into examples. Lesson today. And we're going to see that over and over again. The last one. If the 
take a look, big A point, like right here. The distance between zero and there would be about 0.7. The distance between zero and this point right here would be about 0.2. All of these values have a distance that is less than one. Hence the statement here, x absolute value, or absolute value of x is less than one. Okay, how do we write that as, in, as a compound inequality with an and statement, which we also know, I'm not going to do that if you can't see now, with an and statement here, okay, with an and statement, which can be written as x is greater than negative one and x is less than one. Well, if we go back and think about that, that means that x is really just between negative one and one. X is between negative one and one. Okay. Again, x is greater than negative one is everything to the right of this value here. X is less than one is everything to the left of this quantity. Whoops, smart words off. All the way over here. So what's in between those? Negative one to one. Okay. And we're going to do examples that will make this a little more clear. This is just like our rules for today. Okay. These are just like our rules.
So we put the word or here. And again, or. And that's if you look back in your notes from the first table, we use the word or there. Now, what should you do to make sure this is right? Yeah, please go ahead and do that on your own. I'm going to give you about a minute or two. Take these solutions, plug them into the original, into the original, all the way back up here, please. Plug them in the original, make sure they both work before we go on to the next one. I got one person that said they do. Good. They should work. Let's take a look at the next one now. Take a look at the next one. I want somebody to tell me, I'll let you write for a second. Not the answer, not answering the answer yet. I want somebody to tell me, how would you say this in words? What's going on here? If you were to write a sentence that described this equation, what would that sentence sound like or look like? Why is this 
negative so important right now besides the fact that it's going to give us a different answer? What else? Yeah, when you divide by the negative four, negative four, you're going to flip the direction of your inequality. So let's go ahead and do that now. Divide by negative four on all three spots. <coughs> What's negative 11 over negative 4? Negative 11 over negative 4. Come on, that's on that. Good. 2.75. How do you do this stuff quickly, guys? Think about quarters. How many quarters, well, how many dollars would uh, 11 quarters make up? One dollars, four quarters, two dollars, eight quarters. If you have three more quarters, that's two dollars and 75 cents. So I think of this as 11 quarters in my hand, two dollars and 75 cents. Always use tricks. It does help sometimes. Obviously, you can use tricks. It's not the only Now, what should I have done with the sign? Go ahead and flip it. Make sure we flip it. And obviously, we know this is point two. Okay? So, my solution set for you is between what? Between the head See how much more clear your instructions were? Okay? Be careful. So we're starting at around 0.25. You can put a little mark here if you'd like to. <coughs> that mark here. Okay? If you'd like to. If I see your answer here, obviously, and then I see the solution here, I'll know what you're referring to. Just to be clear. And again, the other way to grab these is you don't even really need these numbers here. You can always just put your endpoints on the number line and just grab them by themselves. That always works. Okay? Question on this one so far. They're going to get tougher. That's why I'm asking this end. So again, here, for this problem, it was an and statement. And we were told that the absolute value was less than 5. So we knew that our range was originally between negative 5 and 5. But once we set up our actual equation and solve, we realized it's between a quarter and 2 and 3 quarters. Okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. We have fractions here. Okay, don't let them intimidate you, please. We have fractions. You can always convert fractions to a decimal if you like. Okay, that's always a possibility. I'm going to do it in fractions, though, just so we're clear as to how to do this. Which rule would this be? One, two, or three? Not three. So right away, here's what I'm thinking. 
if this quantity here were just an x, imagine this was just x then, and it would say the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to three heads, which means that it's further than 1.5 away. So over here, all my answers would be somewhere to the right, because it's further than 1.5 units away from the origin. And over here, all my answers would be to the left, because this is further than 1.5 units away, but in the other direction. Remember, greater than or equal to means that the distance between the solution and the origin is either 1.5, in this case, because it's equal to, or greater than that value. So it's everything to the right. Or if you go back to the negative 1.5, and it's everything to the left. Okay? Now, I don't have x anymore, though. What do I have? Instead of x. What do I have in this problem? Tom? Yeah, 2 plus 1 half x. So if I were to write this as a solution, right, this one here, that we just give it as an example, it would look like x is greater than or equal to 1.5, or x is less than or equal to negative 1.5. Again, that's what this would look like from the number line up here. But again, I don't have x now. We have the quantity 2 plus 1 half x. So instead of writing it like that, we have to write it with the 2 plus 1 half x. So our first equation will say 2 plus 1 half x, I start with this here, is greater than or equal to, and I'm going to use my three hands. Or my other statement will say 2 plus 1 half x is less than or equal to negative 3 halves. Okay? Yes, sir. two on both sides, please. Now, we're going to get one half x greater than or equal to three halves. Now, this is where it does help to think of it as a decimal, okay, or you can think of it as a fraction. Three halves minus two. What do you get from that? Negative three and a half. 
not negative three and a half. Not half. Negative half. Again, guys, this is 1.5. This is 2. You said positive. You guys are correct, okay? Three halves is here, minus 2. 1.5 minus 2 is negative 0.5, or negative 1 half. Over here now, cancel. We get 1 half x less than or equal to a. Negative 3.5, or negative 7 halves. Very good. Again, use decimals if you'd like to, or use fractions. If you use fractions, I think of subtracting 2 as subtracting 4 over 2. Because 4 over 2 is really 2, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2. If you subtract 4 halves from 3 halves, you're going to get negative 3, negative 4, yielding the negative 7 halves. Or as Ed said, negative 1.5 minus 2 is negative 3.5. Right? Get rid of the 1 half. Now I have the answer. This one's the 4. How do I get rid of the 1 half here? Good. Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by 2, please. Denominator is going to cancel. Okay? Both thing cancels here. On this side, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, 2 and 1 half cancel. These two's cancel here. Okay, so I've got two answers for this problem. Two answers. Now, think about what this would look like on a number line to verify that it makes sense. We started with an OR statement. So what kind of a graph do you think it's going to look like? Show me your hands. What is it going to look like here for an OR statement? What is it? Like this, right? Or looking at this way, and looking at this way. So right away, x is greater than or equal to negative one. Let's put negative one here. Let's put negative seven here. So in the right order. Greater than or equal to negative one is exactly what we just showed with our hands. Less than or equal to negative seven is everything in this direction. Okay? And you know what you can do to check? How can you check this one? Because it's not just one answer. What can you do to check something like this? Yeah, so give me an example of everything. What numbers might you try? Positive one, okay, what else? Something over here also. Because it's equal to, that's fine, very good. Just because it has to also be equal to use the negative seven. But my, my suggestion to you guys, test the point, and you're going to start doing this in calculus. Remember when you do derivative tests you guys are doing? You do this in calculus all the time. That's why we're doing these number line things. You're going to be testing points. So pick some point out here, doesn't matter where, some point out here, and test them in the original. Try and plug it in, and it'll be sufficient. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Now, this next one looks confusing. And I'm going through this one, but it's wanting to see a different version. But it's actually quite simple. Okay, so start by writing it down, please. Starting point for this one, what do we think? Nick? Minus four from both sides. Minus four from both sides. Agreed. Let's do that. Minus four, minus four. this as a variable. This variable is kind of the same as this one, isn't it? Absolute value of n is the same as absolute value of n. So if you had 2x and you had 5x, what would you do? Yeah, you would combine by terms, right? Move it over. Same thing. So if I want to since we moved the 12 over, let's move this first. You know? So how do you get rid of the 5n? Oh, 5 x the value of n? You guys, the first round of this, we're good. Alright? So, again, if you have absolute values that have the same quantity in them, you can 
simply combine them. Okay, you can simply combine them. Let's keep going, get rid of the negative three by dividing. Everybody agree that it's less than now? Why don't I switch the sign? Good, divide by negative, flip the inequality. At this point in time, this problem is pretty much done, actually. You can write the last statement, but why is this kind of done already? Of what? And it's just like X, isn't it? So look at your third rule. Look at your third rule. When we had the absolute value of X less than 1, we said X was between negative 1 and 1. Right? That's what this says. But instead of 1, there's a 4. So this tells me what numbers would suffice here. Give me examples of numbers that would work. 3, negative 2, negative 1, anything that happens to be between negative 4 and 4. So your answer for this is negative 4 less than m less than 4. Okay, let's graph the check. And try any number there in the original statement up top to check. What's the easiest number to test in your solution set? Easier. Zero. One is easy, but zero is even easier. Okay? Again, take zero of the number one, test it in the original. Try zero. Don't they drop off? You get four is greater than negative eight. Is that true? Sure it's true. Four is bigger than negative eight. Try one in there. You get six is bigger than negative three. Also a true statement. Okay? So test any of the values in your solution set. Last one. A little bit trickier. Last one. This one's going to take us a little while to go through. Just give me a heads up. starting point for this? <clears throat> Any idea of the starting point? Some. Why are we subtracting the 2 in this point? Is it why are we subtracting the 2? Okay. Which 2 are you talking about? The one inside the absolute value or outside? Yeah, the one inside. Okay, the only problem with that is that we can't start subtracting stuff until we drop the absolute values, right? We have to kind of get rid of the absolute values first. We need it to step before it. We're going to do that for sure. We need another step. Yeah. Isn't this an end statement, really? Remember the other day when it's a compound inequality with your endpoints and your variable term in the middle is an and statement? So let's write this as two separate statements. Let's say one is less than absolute value of 2 minus r and absolute value of 2 minus r is less than or equal to 2. That's my starting point here. This problem is going to get real tricky here in see. Next. Looking at the first statement, let's, let's think of these as two completely uncoupled or separate problems here. Okay, they're not coupled to one another. What can I do? Or this one over here? What do you got? What would it look like? Okay. Okay. Um, if I read it backwards, right, like this, it says that 2 minus r, its absolute value is greater than 1. Right? It's greater than 1. Again, read this, everybody, this way, please. Absolute value of 2 minus r is greater than 1. When it was greater than, we went that way for the absolute value statements. This was rule number 2. We went in these directions. So we're going to have an OR statement for sure. So you're correct about that. I think you flipped your sign down there. Okay. So 2 minus r is going to be bigger than 1, or 2 minus r is going to be less than negative 1. Again, if you think about this statement, and I'm going to write it at the top. If you think about this statement right here as this. Okay, if you think about this statement as absolute value of the quantity 2 minus r is greater than 1, it means that everything bigger than 1 will 
will suffice. Everything smaller than negative 1 will also work. So this statement says everything bigger than 1 is going to work. Everything less than negative 1 is also going to work. Okay? That's an or statement. What about this side now on the right? What about this one over here now? What rule is that one to have it like this? on a number line? What would be the answers? Well, between negative 2 and 2. Again, because I think of everything less than or equal to 2, any numbers are going to work in here. Any of these are less than or equal to 2, and then any of these, when you take the absolute value, are also less than or equal to 2. So for this one, I want to write it like this. in the book also. Read through the examples in the book. 